Hello all, welcome to my channel. My name is Ewan Henry and this is Tech In My Life. So if this is your first time visiting, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. So several years ago, I took you guys on a tour of my home network as I upgraded from what was sort of a network to what I considered more of a robust home network. Well, it's early 2023 and it's time for me to go through that process once again. Now, I'm starting off with a UDM SE, Unified Dream Machine SE Special Edition, a 24 port switch, two Flex Mini, and a Unify Pro 6 access point. I'm also gonna switch over from my current surveillance system, which is Arlo, to uh, Unify Protect. So I have two G3 instant, I have two G4 and one G5 um, 4K Pro. Um, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is probably a two part, which is gonna be the disassembling of my current rack and installing the new components. And then I'll do a separate video on adopting the um, cameras to Unify Protect and setting up Unify Protect. And lastly, I also decided to go to a rack mounted um, UPS. That's gonna be the last component, but that's gonna be added to the rack as I install these components over here. Before I get into taking components out the box, putting rack ears on and so forth, and mounting them to the rack. What I'm gonna have to do, of course, is disassemble my previous rack. So what I wanna do now is just talk about where I started off from, where I currently am, where I'm gonna be, and possibly the next step after this. So years ago, I started off with just a router sitting on a desk, sitting on a table in my basement, and I was not getting great Wi-Fi coverage throughout the house. I also really am a proponent of having as many things wired as possible, direct connect through ethernet. That, that was my preference. So the next iteration of my home network, I went to a rack mounted system. And what I did was I just picked up a 6U nav point rack from uh, Amazon. And I added my 24 port switch. I had a 24 port um, TP-Link switch that I picked up. Then I also, of course, sat on there my edge router. Um, and I was using my edge router. It came with a, a PoE with, with PoE port. So I was using that along with my um, Unify access point. I also was using, I started off a long time ago with a D-Link NAS. And then I upgraded to my Synology NAS, which is what I still currently have. And actually I'll touch on something concerning that a little later. Terminated all of my CAT6 uh, wiring into a patch panel. And I just put a, um, a, a wire management system in front of the patch panel. So you don't really see the patch panel. And directly under my patch panel is a eight port, eight plug um, power strip. The whole purpose of this is to have a, a more direct path towards um, a 10 gigabit home network. Now I don't need 10 gigabit for all of my components. I only actually need it for my NAS, but the NAS that I currently have, my Synology NAS, it does not support 10 gigabit. There is no upgrade path with that particular NAS and I knew I needed more storage. So at one point I was thinking about getting the expansion unit for the Synology NAS. Then it just kind of dawned on me, why don't I just buy another NAS? And fortunately Synology do make a 10 gigabit NAS. Um, they make a four bay 10 gigabit NAS. I think it's the 923 plus. So that way, what I also gain is the ability to separate um, my sort of social stuff, which would be my Plex server and family photos and stuff like that onto the NAS that has, you know, the hardware uh, transcoding and the other NAS, which would be more of my video files and, and Lightroom catalogs and stuff like that onto the NAS that support that higher, um, bandwidth of, of speed, a 10 gigabit networking speed. So that's my upgrade path. And 
the beauty of this is it has two 10 gigabit SFP ports. So we talked about where I started, where I was, where I am now, and just touching on where I plan on going, where I plan on going, like I said, is just to grab another Synology NAS. That way I can go to uh, 10 gigabit um, at home. My plan is to all of the footage that I want to work with, I want to be able to store it on the NAS and just work directly from the NAS when I'm editing videos and so on. So like I said, let's take apart the old rack, then we'll get everything out the box and we'll start working on the new rack, get everything mounted, get it all together, get everything set up. So let's get going and let's get it done.
Okay, so as it stands, everything is set up now the way I want it. I, I had some issues, um, but everything is resolved and I'm finally done. Now, this did take much longer than I anticipated because there were things that I had to purchase and wait for and repurchase and just a, a few things I didn't think about and a few conveniences that after I realized would make things better, I, I purchased a couple of things to just make using the rack a little bit more com, uh, convenient, taking things apart, and we'll cover that in a second. But as it stands, the rack is all set up. Okay, let's start from the very bottom and work our way up. At the very bottom, the first thing is my UPS from Triplight. And then the next thing is a eight port, just a power strip. After the power strip, I have my 24 port PoE switch. Directly above that, I have a patch panel. Now, everything I mentioned here, I'm gonna put links to. Um, some stuff was purchased on Amazon. Most things was purchased from Amazon. A few things was purchased from BNH Photography. So I'll put in the description as many links as I can. Then I have the UDMSE. Um, after the UDMSE, I have another patch panel. Directly above the patch panel is my HD home run tuner along with my, um, I'm using a Dell Wise to run Home Assistant on. So there's that little PC. And above that is my NAS and my uh, modem. So everything is on the rack. I love the way it looks. Um, the wiring on the back, I did as best a job as I could with wire management. It doesn't look too bad. I feel like it could be better, but at this point, I'm not willing to commit more time and energy just to making the wires look better. Now, one of the conveniences um, that I wish I started off with from the very beginning is rack studs. Now, I'm not endorsed, they didn't send anything to me. I just love the rack studs. If you're putting together a rack, that should probably be your absolute first purchase. Um, it's just a pain in the ass if you're gonna use rack nuts to screw in, screw out. You have to use a screwdriver, you have to use a, a power drill or something like that to get it screwed in and screwed out. Um, with, the rack, with the rack studs, you clip the studs in, you put in the little plastic washer, and then you can actually sit the components on the stud. Um, and after you sit them on the stud, you can just kind of hold them from the back if it's a little too heavy, but then you can hand tighten the nuts to make, you know, it, to secure everything to the rack. Genius idea. I love rack studs. Again, uh, from a convenience standpoint, definitely the most convenient part to putting this whole rack together. Anything else? Oh, okay. Here's some things that I think you should consider when putting the rack, a rack together if you're going to do this yourself. Um, cable management, get shorter power cables. Almost every one of my component came with like a six foot power cable get shorter power cables. If you can find ones that have a 90 degree bend in the, in the um, plug, shorter power cables with a 90 degree bend. Um, patch cables, get some easily flexible patch cables. Those make things a lot better. So the patch panels I purchased use keystones. Now, some keystones are narrower than others. The punch down ones that I use, they were so wide that they couldn't fit one alongside another in the patch panel. So what I had to do was I had to go, I had to use a punch down, then a regular female female, and then another punch down and a female female. And it worked fine because I did have some components like my modem that the ethernet ran from the modem into a keystone that's just a plug-in keystone and then out from the keystone into the um whether it was the the udmse or the 24 port switch um so yeah if when, when purchasing make sure that your keystones will fit all into the rack it all worked out and i 
think it looks great. I really like um, the convenience of having the female to female keystones because now if I wanted to run more drops, I would just terminate them and just plug them into the back and go from there. And it makes it so easy to rejigger everything. If you're gonna be taking things apart and putting it back together, it makes it super easy. Also, another pro tip, label maker and label all the cables. Now, in my opinion, if you're gonna use a Unify system, full system, labeling isn't as important as you might think it is because so many devices are recognized. Um, and when you go into the Unify um, user interface and you go to topo topology, you'll see all of your clients, you know what they are. There's icons to, to match up with like 80% of them. A few of them you might have to uh, match up, but for the most part, everything is already labeled. But what I did was I labeled all of my cables and it made it easier in knowing where I wanted them to go because I wanted specific things plugged into the 24 port switch and I wanted specific things plugged into um, the, the UDM. So having the cables all labeled made that that much easier. So that's it guys. Thank you for watching. If you found any information here useful, please leave a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, if there's anything that I missed, um, please don't hesitate to ask questions. Until then, see you guys in the next one.